Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Point Online. We're excited that you're joining us today. My name is Landon Boggs. I get an opportunity week in and week out to help direct our campus support teams. Uh, and today we got a great service plan just for you. We're gonna have a time of music and worship. And then after that, we're gonna have a message from our teaching team. We believe that God wants to speak to you today, that he's a good God. He's got good plans for us. He's the God that saves us. He's the God that comes for us. Again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's go ahead and jump right into things. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You
Hello, New Point. Hey, welcome. We are so glad that you have joined us today as we celebrate Palm Sunday. What does that mean for you and me? It means that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that Jesus came to earth. He took on the form of of a human being, a servant, and he lived the life that you and I could not live. And then he died for sins that he never committed so that you and I could be restored, so that you and I could be transformed, so that you and I could be made new and be able to experience eternal life, a quantity of life, but also a quality of life. And he gives us an invitation now to follow him. In the business world, there's a book out there. It's called Knowing Versus Doing. And they talk about the gap that many times in organizations or in people's lives, we know a whole lot more than what we do. And that's true of all of us. And so they ask the question, do you get it? Do you know? Do you understand? And then they follow up with the question, do you want it? Are you willing to pursue it? Now, we talked about this last week because this is the tension The tension is, I believe, but am I following? I know, but am I doing? And doing is what counts. And doing something requires doing something. I love this quote from Socrates. He says, knowing is not the same as doing. Napoleon Hill says it like this, action is the real measure of intelligence. Wow. That knowledge alone is an action, but we think that. We're we're proud on what we know, but if it doesn't go on to doing, then we become ineffective. We just become smarter. And Jesus does not want you and I just to be smart Christians. He wants us to be followers. And then Gandhi says it like this, action expresses priorities. You want to know somebody's priority? Just watch their behavior. Watch their actions. And so the tension is moving beyond belief to following, to doing. And this is what we've been wrestling with this series called 
beyond belief, embracing what it means to follow Jesus. And Jesus would say this, this is the way. He modeled the way, he taught the way, he showed the way. And we want to recapture what it really means to follow Jesus, to follow the one who gave his life for you and for me. Now, here's what we know. You can be a Christian and not follow Jesus. You can believe in the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and and be saved, but not follow him. Because you can be convinced, but not committed. We know that. Many of us are convinced of many things, but we haven't committed to it. And so being committed to Jesus, to follow Jesus, means that we order our life around his values, around his teachings, around his example. You see, in those very first days, they did not call the followers of Jesus Christians themselves. That was an outside term. That was a derogatory term. It was a political term. It meant to marginalize them and to identify them. They called themselves followers of the way, meaning a whole way of living, a whole way of ordering your life. Every single area of your life was influenced by Jesus, was impacted by Jesus, was ordered by Jesus because he was their rabbi. And a rabbi basically had three levels. It was to be with him, it was to learn from him, and then emulate him. Become, if you will, a carbon copy to order your life around him. And so Jesus gave this invitation 2,000 years ago, and he gives it to you and I today. And here's what Matthew records that he says. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, ruin. And many enter through it. Most people go that route. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to Life, fulfillment, contentment, and only what? Only a few who find it. And so he says, this is where you find life. It's the small gate. It's the narrow road. Not because it's only available to a few, but because it's the way that few follow. And so in this series, we've, we've talked about the path, the way, that there is a price, taking up your cross. But there's also a posture of a man or a woman who truly follows Jesus, who embraces his way. And Jesus gives us the posture. He shows that. He demonstrates that for us. And John records it in the last few hours of Jesus' time before he goes to the cross. And here's what John writes. It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He was going to die on a cross. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And that was to the cross. Goes on. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Now hold on to that thought of Judas, because I'm going to come back to it. He goes on and he says this, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. What John is doing for us here is he's clarifying who is the most powerful person in the room, the one who has all authority, the Son of God, Jesus himself. And so he clarifies that and then he says this, so he, referring to Jesus, got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. Wow. The awkwardness went through the roof. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, in those days, they wore sandals constantly. And by the way, okay, just a little detail they didn't wear socks with their sandals, okay? So their feet got really, really dirty. And usually there was a servant there to wash the feet. The master teacher didn't come in to wash feet. He came in to teach. He came in to model and to show. And and so the awkwardness here went through the ceiling because when he started doing this, I'm sure that their thought was this. He shouldn't be doing this. 
Somebody else should be doing this. Now, they weren't thinking that they should do it, but they no doubt was looking to each other saying, Matthew should do it, or, or, or Peter should do it, or John should do it. And I'm sure that they were confused and bewildered. And I'm sure, you know what, it got very, very quiet. And then guess what? Peter pipes up. And he says what everybody else is thinking. Here's what he says. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Peter's confused. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. There was no place on earth that this made sense because this was a role reversal. The rabbi was washing the feet of his students. And this was not the way of doing things in their day and age. And yet John continues, Jesus replied, you don't realize now what I am doing, but later you will what? You will understand. And Peter no doubt is thinking, this is crazy. And yet Jesus is saying, you'll understand better what I'm doing for you now. And Jesus was referring to the cross, the crucifixion. We talked about that last week. And clearly this was an act of humility on Jesus' part. He is letting them know, you have no idea how much I love you. You have no idea the length of my love that I'm going to show you. You have no idea the price that I am willing to demonstrate my love for you. And yet Pete, being Pete, was still resistant. Look what he says. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Now remember, okay, Peter told Jesus earlier you're not going to suffer. You're not going to die. And he rebukes Jesus. And he's basically saying, this is not the way. This is not how it's supposed to work. There's an easier way. There's a more convenient way. There's a more comfortable way. There's a, there's a better way to honor your position and your status. This makes absolutely no sense to me. And the reason why is because there was never a rabbi who was willing to do this. Peter had no category to put this in. He had no file to put this in. And so Jesus responds to him and says, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. You will have no relationship with me. And so if that's the case, Peter responds, then Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Wow. He's saying, okay, I, I'm all in. I want all of you. And yet Jesus answered. He said, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. Wow. See, Jesus knew what was happening. John continues and says, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not everyone was clean. He's referring to Judas. Hold on to that. He continues, he says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked him. He's basically saying, do you get it? Do you get it? And so Jesus went on to even give a deeper understanding and clarification. He says this, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Wow. Jesus here, he uses both titles. Lord, you're right. I'm your Lord. None of you are above me. I'm all-powerful, I'm all-knowing, I have all authority, and yet I'm also your teacher. And as one who is teaching you, you are to do as I have done for one another. And you don't think there were conflict and issues and struggles among the disciples? They had been arguing who was going to be the greatest and who was going to have this position and that position. And for him to say this, it would rock their world because they had issues with one another. And Jesus went on to say this, I have set for you an example 
a pattern that you should do as I have done for you. He is saying, I've shown you a pattern. I've given you a path. This is the way. Now order your life. Order your life around my example. Order your life around my pattern. I've humbled myself. I've taken on the form of a servant. And I have served you, every single one of you. And so now, follow my example. Don't just believe in me. Follow my example. John continues, very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. He's directly talking to them. And Jesus is letting them know that you know what, you'll never be greater than me. So there'll always be things in your life that you will need to say no to because you will be conformed in my image continually over and over again. And so Jesus takes on the role of a humble servant. And another time where Jesus was, was teaching, he let them see a part of his heart because when, when you share your heart, you're sharing your core of who you are. And Matthew records this. Jesus said, I am gentle and humble in heart. Wow. See, he was demonstrating it there. He was being true to himself. And when you talk about your heart, you're talking about the very core of who you are. And the word here, humility, is not talking about the virtue of humility. What he's talking about is what he demonstrated and what he did for them. That is, he lowered himself. This is experiencing hardship and discomfort and awkwardness. This is being thrown a curveball by life. This is humiliation for any of them to be able to wash one another's feet. And that's why he says here, I am gentle and I'm humble in heart. So what does this mean for you and me, especially today? God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven. He humbled himself. He denied himself. He demoted himself. He took on the form of humanity, of you and me, of the limitations that you and I have. And he lived among us, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life away as a ransom for many. You see, Jesus came to make himself accessible, approachable, and available to all. And he calls you and I to follow him in this path. And in doing so, he set an example because he had the position, he had the status, he had the authority. And yet he set aside all of that and so he has eliminated all of my excuses, all of your excuses for not following his example, his way. Now, I, I told you to hold on to those thoughts about Judas because here's what we need to understand and realize. Jesus washed his feet. Even Judas got his feet washed. And Jesus demonstrated his love to one who would betray him and had continually betrayed him throughout his time here on earth. Here's what John records. When Judas had taken the bread, Satan came in to him. Then Jesus, check these words out. Then Jesus said to Judas, do quickly what you want to do. Wow. When you follow the way of Jesus, there'll always be Judases in your life who won't want to follow the way. And they'll come at you and they'll betray you. And as you read this, no doubt you're thinking what I'm thinking. Jesus, how, how, how could you do this? How, how could you love the one who's lying about you and stealing from you? and misrepresenting you, and betraying you. How could you do that? 
Well, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from the Father and that he was going to return to the Father. You see, Jesus knew who he was. He knew who he was. He knew who who his Father was. And when you know who you are, as Jesus did, here's what happens. You have nothing to prove, you have nothing to hide, and you have nothing to lose. Y'all okay? Listen to me. When you follow the way and you take up your cross and you deny yourself and you embrace the way, you find that you have nothing to prove to anyone. You have nothing to hide from anybody. And you have nothing to lose. (laughs) Y'all okay? And so you know what that empowers you to do? To love anyone and everyone, even the Judases in your life. Jesus wraps up this time with this. He says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you what? If you do them. Not if you know them. Not if you have them written on your walls. Not if you read them in scripture. (laughs) He says, now that you what? Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The word bless here means happiness. You'll be filled with joy. You'll be fulfilled. You'll be envied. People will look at you and they will marvel because they won't understand how you can love that Judas, how you can forgive And how you're free to love anyone and everyone. How you're free to say no to things. And how you're free to say yes to certain things. And Jesus is saying here, if you follow the narrow path, you will be blessed. Not by knowing or believing something, but by following, by by doing. Responding to what you know and what you say you believe. That's how you follow. Now, we don't have this practice here at New Point called feet washing. But you know what? You and I have opportunities every day to follow his example and to put his attitude into our life and to have his attitude as a way of thinking that would represent his ultimate sacrifice. You see, Jesus is saying, do you want to follow me? Do you want to follow my way? Do you want to move beyond belief? Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to order your life around me so that you will find life, fulfillment, contentment, peace, and joy? Here's how I want you to live then. I just modeled it for you. I want you to serve the way of love is to serve. And what happens is we begin to realize that no act of service is beneath us. Why? Because we can even serve Judas. Because we have nothing to prove, nothing to hide, nothing to lose. We're not wrapped up in ourself and in our own way. And it is a, a way to live with readiness and eagerness to serve other people. To live with an awareness of the needs around us and how we can serve other people. This way of love serves other people. It's to pay attention and to notice people in your life. It is to be remarkable in the way in which you care and connect with people. And so the way of love serves, and it also honors, honors. Jesus honored Judas You see, for Jesus, no person was beneath him. And you must not think that you are more important than anyone. We live in a culture today that is filled with disrespect and lack of honor, and it abounds. And Jesus lived in a culture that lived and behaved much that way as well. But he offered a life that was countercultural. And that was the way of love. And the way of love honors people. 
You see, to dishonor someone means that you devalue them. You treat them as ordinary people. Honor means that you assign high value. And Jesus honored people who did not honor him. And he allowed us to see that. And he also allowed us to see that when we don't honor people, we limit God's work in our life. Hey, mom and dad, when you don't honor people who you disagree with, you limit God's work in your life and in your family's life and how your children see you. When we honor people, even those we disagree with, we experience God's power in our life and in our relationships. And when we honor people, we make ourselves available and accessible and approachable to other people, regardless. We're willing to meet with the Judas. We're willing to talk. We're willing to share. We're willing to love. And then the way of love not only serves and honors, but it suffers. It suffers. Because when you serve and you honor, you got to die to yourself. And Peter struggled with that, and we struggle with it. Because Jesus said, if any man come after me, <laughs> he must take up his cross, and he must deny himself. And we talked about this last week, that all of us have things in our life that we need to deny ourselves of. Not just that which is wrong, but there's good things. What do we say? To really follow Jesus is to daily surrender to him and, and to be able to have a life that exhibits sacrifice, sacrificial living. And you know what that does? That calls us to suffer. L listen to me. Crosses are not comfortable. They're not convenient. They cause us to suffer. And if we're truly going to follow the way, if we're going to move beyond belief, if we're going to move beyond knowing to following and doing, it's the way of love. Jesus said, I, I've showed you my love. It serves, it honors, and it suffers. And as Jesus is putting a bow on his time with the disciples before he goes to the cross, he sums up all of his teachings with these last words, and here's what he says. A new command I give you, love one another. They got that one. But then he said this, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. We talk a lot about this here at New Point. We talk a lot about this because we believe that the local church is the hope of the world living and teaching the truth of Jesus Christ. Let me put it to you this way, following the way. And Jesus loved every one of those disciples so much that he was willing to serve them and honor them and suffer for them, even though all of them in their own way had betrayed him. And he says, that's the way I'm asking you to love one another. Not as your dad loved you, your mom loved you, but as I have loved you. And then he says this, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, followers. Not by your doctrine, not by your statement of belief, but by how you love one another, if you love one another. And so Jesus says to you and me, he says it today, as clear today as he did back then. If you're going to follow me, you must take up your cross. You must deny yourself. Peter wanted a more comfortable way, a more convenient way, an easier way. And yet, finally, he saw the extent of Jesus' love on the cross, and he says, I will follow you. I will lift up my own cross, and I will carry it. You see, here's what we need to understand. There's all kinds of people around us that God will bring into our life. And, and, and he wants you to serve them. He wants you to honor them. And he wants you to daily surrender your life. He wants you to sacrificially live. And so what happens is 
You're going to have a spouse. You're going to have a son. You're going to have a daughter. And you know what? We're called to serve them. You see, this way of living, this kind of person is the people we like to hang out with, right? They're the people that we admire. Those are the people that we want to hire. Those are the people that we want our kids to marry. And yet Jesus is calling you and I to be that person. And so he's asking you and me to follow the way. And so here's the challenge that I have for you as we wrap up. I want you to take a personal inventory. Who do you need to serve? Who's your Judas? You've talked about them. You've criticized them. You maligned them. You've done everything. And you know what? You're not following Jesus. <laughs> you're not a follower of Jesus. And the people who know you know that you're not following Jesus. Who do you need to honor? Who do you need to thank? Who do you need to, to value more? And where do you need to suffer? Where is it that you need to deny yourself? It might be in the workplace. It might be in your home. It might be here at New Point. I don't know. But where do you need to demonstrate the way of love of serving and honoring and suffering. It may be with your spouse. It may be in a dating relationship. It may be in the workplace. It may be at school. It may be in your neighborhood. It may be here at New Point. And Jesus is saying to you and I, I want you to serve, honor, and suffer. You see, here's the test. The test of following Jesus is not just to love him, but to love Judas. Who's your Judas? To follow Jesus is to love him. And Jesus washed his feet. And then he looked at them and he said, and this is how they will know that you are my followers, by the way in which you love one another, by the way in which you order your life around mine. And this truth encompasses everything that Jesus taught. Show love, recklessly, generously, freely, and this will be how they know that you are my followers. Imagine if everyone who calls New Point their home would move beyond belief and embrace what it literally means to follow Jesus, to model what he taught and what he lived. Imagine if all of us would embrace this, that we would serve, that we would honor, and that we would be willing to suffer. History tells us that when that happens, communities flourish. Relationships flourish. Marriages flourish. Influence deepens and broadens. Businesses flourish. Imagine the impact if we would decide to exercise our will and to be able to say, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. He says that you and I will be blessed. And you won't find that in success, status, or stuff. The narrow way, which was modeled and taught by our teacher, is the way in which he calls you and I to live. Today, all across our campuses, we are celebrating this with baptism. And baptism is a symbol of this. You go underwater, and what you're saying is you're dying to your old way of life, your way, and you're coming up out of that water to follow a new way, the way, Jesus' way. Let's pray. God, I thank you today for who you are. I thank you for 2,000 years ago you came to earth to teach us the way, to teach us the truth, to teach us how to experience life and life to the fullest and to model it for us. We thank you for that. God, in a world that is so divided and so hurting and so broken, we need 
you. We need to follow your way. And so may we be filled with your love and be able to demonstrate the way of your love by serving and by honoring and by suffering for your cause and for your church. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're glad that you spent your morning with us. Listen, if you would like prayer, uh, you can go to newpoint.org slash prayer. We would love to pray specifically for you this weekend. And if there was anything in this service that connected with you or inspired you, please follow us on social media, follow us on YouTube. That's where you can keep up with all the things that we have going on. If you've not had an opportunity to join us at one of our physical locations, please make arrangements to do that. If you live anywhere in the Eastern Ohio area, we're probably closer than you think. So you can go into our menu, you can find out where the nearest one is near you. We would love to meet you this weekend, nine and 11 o'clock. We'd like to get a gift to you just for showing up. And then also show you around the place, introduce ourselves. We'd love to meet you there.